Take a seat, and as you're sitting down, I want you to take your Bibles or your apps or whatever you have your Bible on and turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Speaking of Bibles, um, if you don't have a Bible at home, please feel free to take one of the uh, Bibles that are in the pews. Uh, We want everybody at this church to have a Bible at home that they can read and study uh, at their houses. So uh, if you need one, take one. It's yours. Um, So, we've been studying about how to be happy. Uh, The whole series is on being happy. Before I get into that too much, let me introduce myself. Uh, My name is Chad. I'm the associate pastor here at Calvary. Um, You may have noticed I share a name with our lead pastor, Chad. Uh, So, some of you may know me as uh, the OC, which is short for the other Chad. Um, I answer to both. Uh, you can feel free to you know, call out to me in either one of those. Uh, but I am temporarily, for the next few months, also answering uh, to the Oh Great Bearded One. So if you want to call me that, please feel free. Uh, I am honored to be called that. So um, you actually may be wondering why I have this big bird's nest on my face. Um, There are three reasons, and let me make it very clear to you right now. The first reason is I'm going to be playing Jesus in this year's uh, Easter production, so I'm trying to get a full-on Jesus-y beard going. Um, The second reason uh, is slightly less important in my eyes, but maybe not in yours. It's just cool. I mean, look at this thing. It breathes manliness. So... Uh, you know, it, 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 that's the second reason. The third reason um, is probably the most uh, important to me personally. Uh, you may notice that I don't have a whole lot up here. Um, and so I, my, the top of my head is living vicariously through my facial hair <laughs> right now. So um, that's the biggest reason for me personally. Uh, listen, you can live vicariously through your kids. I'm going to do it through my facial hair. And it works for me, okay? So don't judge. Um, <laughs> So Chad already has alluded to the fact that tomorrow is the Super Bowl, and we've already expressed who our team favorites are for tomorrow's game, but I've got a different question. Uh, My question to you, so turn to your neighbor here in just a second and answer this question. What are you going to pig out on tomorrow night? What are you going to totally overeat? So turn to your neighbor, tell them what you're going to eat way too much of. For me personally, uh, for me it's going to be chili. Uh, I already have a big old vat of chili sitting on my stove as I speak. Um, And and I don't know if any of you are chili connoisseurs or not, but my chili uh, is best if it's cooked the day before and simmers for a few hours, and then you put it in the fridge, get it out the next day, put it back on the stove, let it simmer. I don't know why, but it's better that way. Um, So... It's already ready. It's going to be you know, put in the fridge tonight, and we'll get it out in the morning and let it simmer most of the day. It's going to be delicious. I will overeat on it. I will be bloated. I will be uncomfortable, and I'll love every minute of it. <laughs> it will be fabulous. But that's actually what we're talking about tonight. If you take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to read the passage that we're focusing on uh, through this entire series. Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 2. It says, And Jesus opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Today we're going to focus primarily on verse 6. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. We're going to focus on righteousness and hungering and thirsting for it. But let's face it, righteousness is one of those churchy words, isn't it? It's not a word that you hear outside of a church context. And as a youth pastor, my experience is is that you'd be surprised how many people have no idea what righteousness means. So let's look at this word 
righteousness for a moment. What does it mean? Righteousness means to be perfectly moral according to God's standard. To be perfectly moral according to God's standard. It's to not live in sin. It's to be perfect without sin. But wait just a second. We're called to be righteous, but can any of us in this room or on the face of the earth accomplish that definition? Can any of us be perfectly moral according to God's standard? No. And that's a problem. That's where the big problem lies is that we're called to hunger and thirst for righteousness, but we can't achieve total righteousness. We can fall short every single time. We do fall short every single time. You see, here's how this works. We are imperfect humans. We sin. We can't help it. It's part of our nature. It's who we are. So that's the reason God had to send his son. You see, God sent Jesus Christ to this earth, and Jesus lived 33 years and did not sin a single day in his entire life. Guys, I don't know about you, but I've sinned multiple times today. I've probably sinned since I took this stage. So Jesus lived his entire life and never sinned once, which is the only reason that he was worthy enough to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. You see, we live in unrighteousness. We are people of unrighteousness. And God had to send his son, the perfect sacrifice, to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. And the Bible tells us that What we need to do is seek after Christ's righteousness because his blood covers us. We can have that. You see, let me dispel the greatest myth that is out there. You cannot get to heaven on your own righteousness, on your own good deeds. You can't. Because your righteousness, your goodness, is not being compared or measured by the person sitting next to you. It's not being compared to someone who's in jail or to your children or to your parents or to your employees or employers. That's not who you're being compared to. Your righteousness or lack thereof is being compared to God's righteousness. And since God is perfectly righteous and we're not, none of us can get to heaven on our good works because our good works are trash compared to God. Because he is perfect. You're not being compared to another person. Your righteousness or lack thereof is being compared to God's. That's why your good works can't get you to heaven. Only Jesus' good works can get you to heaven. Only Christ's blood can get you to heaven. That's what true righteousness is. And that's why he wants us to hunger and thirst after it. Have you ever seen one of those movies where the guy is lost in the desert and he eventually gets so thirsty to the point that he's crawling through the sand, you know, going, water, water. What is that person thinking about? Water. There's one thing that that person's thinking about and it's water. Does the person care about what temperature it is outside? No, because he's gotten to the point that he only cares about getting water. Because without water, what's going to happen? He's going to die. We as Americans don't know what true hunger and thirsting is. I seriously doubt whether any of us in this room have ever starved or have ever truly gone thirsty. But that's the way Christ wants us to be about righteousness. Christ wants us to truly starve for righteousness. He wants us to be so hungry and so thirsty that all we can think about and everything that is in our day is focused on seeking righteousness. That's what this passage tells us. This passage tells us that we need to seek righteousness as if nothing else matters in the world. That's what this tells us. And here's why. Just as the body needs good food to be healthy, the spirit needs righteousness to be healthy. Just as every one of our bodies needs healthy, good food in order to be healthy, our spirit within us needs righteousness in order to be healthy. Now, some of you may have noticed the amazing health food that I have up here today. And this isn't just a prop. These are, I've got Twinkies in here. Anybody want a Twinkie? Oh, just missed. Just missed. 
Okay, let's see if I can get one way back to the back. I got the distance, but the accuracy was completely off. Okay, I'll... <laughs> and I missed it. All right, one more. Nice. That was awesome. Okay, so let me ask you this. How many of you, when they announced that Twinkies were going to be discontinued and no longer make them, how many of you died a little inside? <laughs> right? When it was announced, I actually felt sad. And the hard part about it, the pathetic part about this, is I maybe eat two Twinkies a year. And it's on those random trips to Phoenix. You know what I'm talking about. You're driving down, you go through courtside, you stop, and you're like, oh, i got to go to the bathroom, I want a Coke. And you get your Coke, and then you go, I could use a snack. I'm not hungry, but I could use a snack. And what do you go to? The Twinkies, the Ho-Hos, the Ding Dongs, right? (laughs) You just, I haven't had one of those in like five months. I need a Twinkie. And so you get a Twinkie. Now, that's my life. I don't know how many of you live on Twinkies, but um, if I was to eat Twinkies all day, every day, could I live on these? Technically, I could live on them, but would I live a good life? No. Because what is this Twinkie over time? What is multiple Twinkies all day, every day going to do to my body? It's going to destroy me. It's going to rot me from the inside out. They're going to be delicious while they're killing me, but they're going to kill me. They will kill my body because they don't contain the things that my body needs to function properly. Guys, that's what unrighteousness does to our spirit. Unrighteousness is like that horrible food that you keep taking in because it's delicious, but it's slowly killing you from the inside out. That's what unrighteousness is. Unrighteousness is sin. It's that stuff that we know we're not supposed to do, but we do it anyways. If I went to the doctor and got diagnosed with a heart problem, what's one of the first things that my doctor is going to have me change? My diet. Stop eating Twinkies. So my doctor is going to tell me, hey, you need to improve your diet. You need to eat healthier foods, right? Because our heart is going to either do really well or really bad based on what we eat. That's the way it works. My dad got diagnosed uh, with a heart problem years and years and years ago. And one of the first things that the doctor said, he said, you needed to change two things about your lifestyle. Quit smoking and change your diet. Which was hard, because my mom makes the best fried chicken on the face of the planet. And my dad loves fried chicken. And so it was hard because he had to cut out a lot of those kinds of foods because it was destroying him from the inside out. As delicious as that fried chicken is, it was killing him. That's what unrighteousness does to our spirit. It slowly, from the inside out, kills us spiritually. Our spirit needs righteousness to be healthy. It's a necessity. It longs for it. It needs it. It may not be the thing that you want in the moment, but your heart, your spirit has to have it in order to survive, in order to be healthy. But there's more. Righteousness truly satisfies, but unrighteousness does not. Righteousness truly satisfies, but unrighteousness doesn't. When I was in college, um, I did a lot of stupid things. Have you ever eaten something, and in the moment you were eating it, you were like, oh, this is amazing, I love this. And then right after, you're like, oh, why did I do that? You ever done that? When I was in college, a bunch of my friends and I uh, went to this Mexican food place in Amarillo, Texas called Ruby Tequilas. If you ever go through Amarillo, eat at Ruby Tequilas. Best Mexican, Tex-Mex food ever. So imagine 15 college students sitting around a table eating this Mexican food, One of the guys goes, hey, I'll give anybody 10 bucks to eat that bowl of salsa right there. (laughs) Big bowl of salsa because it was a big table. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. I'm the little guy. I'm always having to prove my manliness. Come on. (laughs) So so I grabbed the bowl of salsa and chugged it down. Hey, I got 10 bucks out of it. Don't judge me. (laughs) That took me to the movies later on that night. Thank you very much. But I chugged that thing down, and it was good. 
their salsa is amazing. So I chugged it down. It was delicious. And, and we kept on going through the meal. And about midway through the meal, one of the guys leans over and goes, hey, I bet I can eat more tacos than you. Okay. So we had a taco eating contest on top of the salsa that I just ate. I don't remember how many I ate, but believe me, I regretted it later. It was one of those situations where I loved doing it in the moment. It was great. I was having fun. Everything tasted good. It was wonderful. But afterwards, I felt like a beached whale. I was laying on the couch going, oh my gosh. I was miserable. I was sweating. I was hurting. My stomach was turning. I think the tacos were physically fighting me back. It hurt. But the worst part was the next day when I had to go to the bathroom. I've cried maybe five or ten times in my lifetime, and that was one of them. And it happened for like a day and a half. It wasn't one of those things that happened once, and then you're like, oh, I'm fine. No, it kept hurting. (laughs) Guys, righteousness is that good food, but unrighteousness does that exact same thing, doesn't it? We're in the moment and we love the unrighteousness and we love how it feels and how it tastes and everything about it. And then what does it do to us later on? It puts us through pain. It kills us. It hurts us. It leaves us wanting something more. It leaves us unsatisfied. It leaves us in a place where we're in pain and we struggle and we hurt. That's what it does. It kills us. But the flip side is is that righteousness in our life will fill us and satisfy us. It will take care of us. It will watch over us. It will protect us because it's God's will for that. And so if we live in righteousness, we'll be satisfied. We'll be happy. We'll be blessed because that's God's plan for us. When we seek the righteousness that Christ has for us, That's when we're satisfied. It's when we seek after the unrighteousness, our sin, that suddenly we have an emptiness inside of us. We're left hurting. We're left wounded. We're left struggling. So righteousness is what we need to seek after because it fills us. But the sad truth in all this is that we acquire a taste for the things that we take in. We acquire a taste for the things that we take in. We get used to them. Whatever we eat all the time, we get used to it. I have a friend who, poor soul, got to be a missionary in Australia for a summer. Rough life. Rough life. Poor kid. He uh, went to Australia, came back after being there for three months. And he brought back all these little packets. They were like the butter packets that you get at the restaurant, the little plastic dishes with the peel top on it. But it had the word Vegemite on top. Have you ever heard of this stuff? Australians eat it like peanut butter. But it's disgusting. If you're from Australia, I apologize right now because I'm about to insult your nationality maybe. But this stuff is basically, it's brewer's yeast. The yeast that they use in the beer making process. And when they scrape the bottom of the beer vats after it's made... This is the yeast that's left over, and they process it and blend it with some vegetables that have been fermented and spices and put it in a jar like peanut butter. Yeah, you all go, ooh, they put it on everything. (laughs) Vegemite sandwiches, they use it instead of ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise. I mean, it's used on everything. If you're wanting a snack, you grab a cracker and your Vegemite. That's what they eat. They love the stuff. It's disgusting, but they love it because they grew up with it. It's part of what they've acquired a taste for, right? I'm from the South, and I love molasses. I'll eat molasses. I'll dip bread right in the jar and eat it straight out. I love the stuff. My wife hates it because she never ate it as a kid. I've acquired a taste for it because I grew up on it. We do the same thing with our sins. We acquire a taste for a particular sin in our life, and we get used to it, don't we? We take in that sin so much that we go, ah, it's not so bad. It doesn't hurt as much anymore. 
Because you know what's happening there? Ephesians 4 tells us that our hearts, when we take a sin in and we live in that sin without repenting of it, our hearts get calloused. You know what a callous is? Those of you who have ever worked with your hands or ever lifted weights or anything like that, you get calluses on your hands. Why? Because you destroy your skin over and over and over and over enough times that your skin fights back by putting scar tissue there so that it won't continue to get hurt. That's what your heart is forced to do when you continue living in sin and not repenting of it. It builds a callus. So eventually you get to where you go, oh, you know what? The pain of this sin isn't as bad as it used to be. It's not quite as empty as it was before. And you don't see that it's killing you from the inside out because you get used to it. Guys, we can't live that way, can we? We have to turn away from our unrighteousness, from our sin, and embrace righteousness in its place. So those calluses will be gone so that our heart can be blessed, we can be happy, and we can live the way God wants us to live. That's what we're called to do. So, do we live in that unrighteousness? Or do we live in that righteous life? Because if we're living in the unrighteousness, that means our spirit is slowly dying and decaying because we're not taking care of it. The things we're taking in spiritually are killing us spiritually. And so, here's my last question that I want to close out with tonight. What do you hunger and thirst for? What is it in your life that you hunger and thirst for? What is it that you seek after? What is it that you long for? Is it righteousness? Or is it something else? This week, I want you to examine your life. And I wanted you to look at where you spend your money. Or where you want to spend your money. Where do you spend the most time? What do you think about most of the time? What are your thoughts always on? Because that tells you what you're hungering and thirsting for. Wherever your mind is, where your, wherever your money goes, wherever your time goes, those things reveal to you what you hunger and thirst for. So this week, take an account of where you're hungering, where you're thirsting. Because let me be truly blunt with you here. If you're living in that unrighteousness, you're not going to be happy. You may be happy in the moment, but eventually that unrighteousness will tear you apart and destroy you from the inside out. If you're not hungering and thirsting after righteousness, then you're not hungering, hungering and thirsting after the right things. So examine your lives. Figure out what you're hungering and thirsting for. Join me in prayer. Almighty God, we, we thank you so much uh, for tonight, for this opportunity, for uh, your blessing in our life. And God, we pray that you'll help us to see, open our eyes and our mind to the ways that we, we fall short in the things that we seek after, the things we hunger for and thirst for. And instead, God, help us to hunger and thirst for you and your righteousness so that we will be truly satisfied the way Matthew 5, 6 promises. So God, help us to seek after, to hunger for, to thirst for righteousness. And help us to peel those calluses away from our hearts so that we can embrace your righteousness wholly. We thank you so much, Lord, for all of these things. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let's stand and worship.